Hello and welcome back to the next episode of Crossroads Rebuild. My name is Steven and I'm so glad that you've joined me for this episode. In the last episode, Doug and I got this dash replaced and it looks awesome, but we didn't actually finish everything up. There's still a few odds and ends that I need to get to, some of which I'm going to do tonight and then we're going to move on to some other things. So let me show you what I've got going on here and what I'm going to get into first. Alrighty guys, so here is our nice new dash. You notice that the glove box is not installed yet and I actually have the passenger knee airbag over here as well. Uh, the reason we didn't finish putting this stuff in though is because of this right here. Now when I bought this dash, the company I bought it for is a local uh, auto recycler salvage yard and they already gave me a really awesome deal on this, on this dash. But they had to pull it from the donor vehicle and they called me the next day and said, hey, when we were pulling the dash, uh, we got a little bit of damage on it. Do you still want it? So I asked them for a little bit of information and I decided, hey, let's go ahead and take it, but will you give me a little bit of a discount? They said, sure, we'll work with you. So in any case, let me show you the damage and then I'll tell you uh, what kind of a deal I got on this. So basically what happened was, as they were pulling it out, uh, this right here that runs along the bottom, all of that got kind of broken off. It broke right here, and then it broke uh, right here in the corner, and then again over there as well. Now, is that a big deal? I didn't really know when I bought it because I hadn't ever taken one out, but actually it's really not that big a deal. For starters, this down here isn't really structural at all. Um, and then this over here is sort of structural because part of the uh, glove box does attach to it, but it does bolt in down here. So we've got one solid mounting point. And then this up here, I'm pretty sure I can repair pretty easily. And that's what I'm going to get into first. So, so because of this damage, wait till you hear this. They gave me this dash for $100. I got an entire dash with a little bit of damage for $100. So I'm going to go ahead and fix that up tonight get that ready to go. I'll show you what I'm going to do with it. And then I uh, will go ahead and get the airbag installed and the uh, glove box installed. Actually, I think it goes in reverse order. But before I get into that, I want to show you one other thing. Actually, I'm not really so much wanting to show you something as I am wanting to let you hear something. You see how the exhaust is on the ground. I did that because we took the drive shaft out. Uh, if you haven't seen the last video, go ahead. I'll go ahead and put a link up here so you can see that video uh, where we took that out and I'll tell you why. But in any case, the exhaust is out of here. Well, the other night when Doug and I were working, uh, when we got done, I thought, hey, we probably ought to turn this thing on. Just make sure everything that we unhooked and put back together uh, there in the dash, make sure everything's still working. So turn the electric on, everything worked great. And then totally forgetting about the fact that I had pulled this exhaust off, uh, I went ahead and started it up. And it sounds freaking amazing. Let me go ahead and start this thing for you so you can hear what this thing sounds like. Essentially straight piped, no mufflers on this thing. Let me go ahead and start it up. Yeah, am I right? Doesn't that sound amazing? No, I'm not gonna straight pipe the interceptor, but wow, that sounds awesome. All right, enough of this. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off and get to work on that dash so we can get on to some other things as well. Alrighty, I am about ready to uh, put this glove box back together. So you can see what I've done here. Uh, almost a drift stitch kind of a situation with some zip ties. Just drilled a hole in top and bottom pieces, zip tied it in three places, and then threw some JB Weld two-part epoxy on there. So I've got that uh, part uh, all epoxied up. And it's not 100% set, but it's not doing too bad. Went ahead and also threw a little bit on each of these pieces. You can see I've removed the bolts in preparation for putting the glove box in and it's holding itself in place. Again, that's not really structural, so 
I'm not too worried about it. It's just nice that it's holding itself in place. So now I'm going to go ahead and get the glove box frame or whatever you want to call that uh, installed. And then we'll put the glove box in. Then we'll put the knee airbag in. And uh, this part is basically done at that point. So let's keep going. All right, there she is. Glove box is in. Knee airbag has been replaced. There are still a few trim panels here and there that need to go in, but I am not gonna worry about those just yet because uh, there's still some stuff I need to do here. Uh, the center console area, uh, like the old, uh, like the airbag sensor and uh, my replacement console and all that. I'll show you that in another video. Um, so I'm not gonna worry about that stuff right now, but I do have the airbag and the glove box back together. So we are a step in the right direction. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on to working on the front end. So let's keep going. Alrighty, with that glove box and airbag being done and the dash being more or less there now, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the front end. I'm gonna see how much of this I can mock up tonight and kind of get test fit. I'm getting ready for paint. It's gonna be ready for paint. Hopefully this weekend we're gonna paint it. And so I wanna get this ready, make sure everything fits and make sure uh, that I've got everything I need. Uh, I also kind of wanted to see what it looks like. So I'm gonna get to work on this. I'm gonna start uh, by putting the crash bar back on and then start test fitting things up. It's gonna be a little bit of trial and error. So I'm gonna put you guys on time-lapse and I'm gonna get to work. All right, guys, so I pulled my grill out that I got from Salvage Yard, and I've actually found a little bit of problem here, a little bit of damage that I didn't realize was there. Uh, of course, I knew it had a few scuffs and stuff, and I wasn't worried about that for the price I paid for it, but, but unfortunately, I did notice that uh, it's broken pretty bad over here. I had not noticed that in the salvage yard. I did not buy this online. No one cheated me on this. This is totally on me. Uh, I just did not realize that this thing was broken like it is. So uh, unfortunately, I am not going to be using this uh, for my permanent grill. I'll still be able to use it for test fitting stuff, uh, but I'm gonna have to go ahead and source a replacement grill. So I'm on the hunt for that, but it's not gonna stop me tonight in test fitting. It's just a disappointment. Anyway, thought I'd share that with you. Back to work. Alrighty guys, I've probably gone about as far as I'm gonna go for tonight. I have both headlights in. Um, unfortunately, I can't turn them on and show you how beautiful they look because, well, they don't come with headlight bulbs for starters. And uh, I think I'm gonna need to figure out how to hook up the uh, LEDs. Sure, I'm just missing something, but didn't see that. So we got one little bitty light that comes on over there. I'm sure you saw that in the time lapse. But uh, anyway, got both headlights in, they look awesome. Uh, got our broken grill connected to our bumper and the lower bumper uh, piece as well. Those are three separate pieces. Um, I don't have everything fully installed, and really I can't. I've just got it hung by a couple of bolts there uh, with the grill. Uh, these over here are going to fit just fine, uh, but I, uh, I need some brackets uh, installed on here. Uh, there's some brackets that uh, rivet on here and then bolt onto the uh, bottom of the fender, but I can't really do that until after it's painted. So unfortunately... <laughs> 
I can't really make that look fully uh, installed. Uh, same thing over here, don't have the bracket, uh, but it is gonna look nice and fit well once it's in there. So um, I know it looks kind of goofy, but uh, unfortunately this is about as far as I'm gonna go because now I still need to take the grill and this lower bumper off so that we can paint this center section. Uh, and I'm real bummed I accidentally rolled it on the floor and scratched it a little bit, so we're gonna have to fix that uh, before it's painted. But uh, in any case, it does give you a rough idea of what this thing will look like um, when it's all put together. It's starting to look like a vehicle again, which is really, really cool. All right, guys, it's starting to get late over here, so I'm gonna cut it off for the night. I will pick up uh, another day. Uh, really exciting, I have uh, an appointment to meet with an officer tomorrow to get the rebuilt title work going for this uh, so I can hopefully have that all in time to drive it uh, on my road trip here in a few weeks. Uh, so that's tomorrow, and then uh, later this week, I'll be back here to do a little more test fitting and then to get things ready for paint and get this thing over to my buddy's paint shop. So that's where I'm gonna call it for tonight. We'll see you in a second. And we're back. So the other night when I was working, I kind of test fitted uh, the front end. Of course, I had that real disappointment with the broken grill. Uh, we did get the bumper kind of hung on there. Couldn't put brackets on, so nothing fit well. But I just kind of wanted to see it on there, see how things would kind of line up. Um, so tonight, I got to finish getting this thing ready for paint. In fact, I've actually got a little help behind the camera. It's my wife, Erica. She's going to help me with peeling the wrap because she loves to peel plastic off of things. It's one of her things. And so she's been really dying to peel this wrap off of this. And I've been telling her no for a while because I wanted to protect the paint as long as possible. But it's going to paint, and so we need those doors to be black before we do that. So she's going to help me with that. But I also need to get the front end ready. So I need to take these headlights off. I'm not going to transport the vehicle with the headlights on so that they're protected. I'm going to put them away. And uh, so I'm going to do that, tighten the core support back up. And then I'm also going to do just a little bit of repair here on this seam sealer. Eric, go on, come on in here. So as you know, this hood was partially repaired by uh, the, the, the police department or whoever was taking care of it before it got salvaged. Um, and so they must have fixed a dent right here, uh, but the seam sealer got pretty jacked up. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean that up and put a little bit of new seam sealer on there before we get ready to paint this thing uh, so that that'll look better once it's all said and done. So headlights off, uh, core support tightened, fix the seam sealer. While I'm doing all of that, she's gonna get started on the wrap. And when I'm done, I'm gonna join her on that and we're gonna try to get all of the white panels black tonight. So that's what we're hoping to accomplish. Let's go ahead and get started. Well, I have ground off the old seam sealer where it was all kind of buggered up there. And uh, we've got a pretty good surface to work with now. So I am going to go ahead and put uh, a new coat of seam sealer here uh, just along this area. I'm gonna try not to make too much of a mess of it. Uh, I've never done it before, so hopefully it goes well. And then uh, after I've done that, I might throw a little primer and then a little, uh, just a little bit of spray paint on it. I've got some body color paint. Um, but we are gonna be painting this as well, so I'm not too worried about that. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get that uh, seam sealer put on and I'll keep you updated on how it's going. Let's keep going.
Variety Seam Healer is on. Unfortunately, I think my time lapse was running just a little bit too low on the framing there. So you may not have been able to see that, but I did get it done. And I'm gonna peel this tape off here in a little while and let this dry before I try to put any kind of uh, primer or paint on it. Now over here, we've got Erica working on the uh, peeling of the wrap. She's making good progress. There's some frustrations here and there. Uh, you can see like right here around the mirror, same thing around the door handle and uh, this window trim uh, that is gonna probably require taking some of these pieces off. Main reason for peeling this off right now is so that we can um, make sure our paint colors are looking good together, uh, blend if necessary, certainly on the other side where we have to paint that other door. Um, but um, this will get us pretty good for tonight. So anyway, she's gonna keep going. I'm gonna go ahead and join her now and uh, we'll see how much of this we can get uh, unwrapped. Alrighty guys, look at this. Sadly, when I was peeling uh, the wrap off this side, my time lapse didn't record. I wanna blame the equipment, but I'm pretty sure it's user error, unfortunately. But would you look at this? This door is 100% peeled. Just a tiny little bit down here inside the door handle. I'll have to take that off. Don't really feel like messing with that tonight. Um, however, this door doesn't have an inner door panel in it right now. So I did take this off and we got all the, the uh, wrap out from underneath the trim there. Uh, and so that looks really, really good. Once this door is painted, this is gonna look awesome. Now over here on this side, wow, would you look at that? Went ahead and uh, kind of cleaned some of the dust and dirt off of uh, the front fender and this rear quarter. Uh, so we can see the entire side is completely black now and it looks awesome. It's gonna need some uh, polishing and all that, of course, once it's done, but man, does it look good as a solid black vehicle. So, still again, have a little bit here. Uh, we were able to tuck most of this out of the way. At some point, I'll probably go ahead and take this off and get it out from under there. Um, and I'm gonna have to take it off to get these door handles off anyway. So I'll probably do that at the same time. But for now, it looks decent because it's tucked up in there. And then the worst part, unfortunately, is right here by the mirror where you just really, <laughs> You can't, you can't get under there. So I'm gonna have to take that mirror off to do that. So I'll probably just do it all at the same time. But we got the bulk of it off and it looks really, really awesome. Alrighty, up here where I put the new seam sealer in, uh, it's kind of dry to the touch, but it's still kind of tacky. Peel the tape off and these edges are just a little bit rough. I'm gonna have to let this dry some more before I can really do anything with it. So what I'm gonna do is just let that dry overnight and then when I come back and get ready to take this over uh, for paint, I'll probably go ahead and clean it up then, or maybe we'll just clean it up over at the paint shop. But for now, at least the seam sealer is on there. All right, guys, this is where we're gonna wrap up this episode. So we've test fitted the front end and got it uh, ready. We got the headlights in and we know that they fit now. And uh, the biggest transformation is just getting all of this wrap peeled off. The interceptor is ready to go to the paint shop. Slap some wheels on it haul it on over there and we can get this thing looking really, really nice. It's one, well, it's not one color yet, but it's almost one color. Again, it will be very, very soon. So I'm really excited about the progress we've made on the Interceptor and I'm even more excited about getting this thing over to paint 
and making it look awesome again. If you're excited about that, go ahead and drop a like on this video. And if you're not already subscribed, why don't you go ahead and take care of that now and then click that little bell so you can be notified each time I upload a new episode. There's already a bunch of episodes before this one, so I encourage you to go back and watch them. I'll go ahead and leave uh, a link to the playlist right up here for you. You can click on that and you can see all the videos that we've done on the Interceptor so far. So off to paint she goes. If you're not already doing so, why don't you also go ahead and follow me on social media. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Uh, there's links in the description below. You can follow me there where I'll post pictures, videos, and updates periodically, keeping you updated on the things that I'm working on in between videos. Thank you guys so much for joining me for this episode. Stay tuned for the next one where we paint the Interceptor and get ready to start putting it back together. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next video. So because of this pretty minor damage, I actually got this dash. Hold on to yourself. No, I don't want to say that.